in this episode of PHP Packages, we're going to be looking at monolog. Now, logging isn't really one of those fancy things that us programmers love doing, but it is extremely important in a larger application when you need to know when things are happening and more importantly, when errors have happened and you've got all the relevant information you need. So as always with my PHP package videos, I'm going to be using my scratch pad and I'll link this down in the description. And this is just a very simple PHP file with some basic setup in the file ready to go. It's just doing some basic setup like in bringing in the autoloader and also the whoops error library. So if there are any errors as we code, it just makes that a little bit easier to understand what's going on. So let's get started. I'm just going to switch over to my terminal and install this. So to install this, it's a simple composer require. And we want to require monolog forward slash monolog. Now back over in our project, let's start using this. I'm just going to remove this try catch here. No, that in this video. The first thing we need to do is create a new instance of monolog and the logger. So at the top of the file, go up here, let's bring that in. I'm just going to say use monolog backslash logger. Okay, now let's new up a new instance of this. So let's create a variable called logger and we'll set this to a new instance of logger. Now, as an argument, this takes in one parameter and this is the channel name. Now, you can call this whatever you like. It's just something you need to easily recognize when you start walking through your log files. So you can actually create multiple channels. So say, for example, you had errors you wanted to log that were user specific. You could create a dedicated channel with the name user. And then maybe you add orders as well and you wanted to make a specific channel for logging order errors. Then this is how you do it. So let's just keep it simple first. So I'm just going to create a new string here and I'm just going to call this info. So just a generic info logger. So as I say, the name is mostly irrelevant, just something that you are going to remember. So now we have the new instance of the logger. We actually now need to tell it how to handle the logs. Now monolog comes with many handlers. And I'm not going to cover them all just in this basic video, but I'll show you the library documentation towards the end and show you the different loggers that you can use. So what these do is they log the information in a certain way. So the most basic one is to a file on your server, which I'm going to cover in this video. But there's also different handlers for things like store it to a database, sending emails, even things like sending push notifications to applications such as Telegram or Slack or other similar applications like that. So maybe for severe errors, you might want to get a push notification to your Telegram chat application. Or maybe you just want to log some basic information and then that might be better just to log it to a file to the server so you can pick that up whenever you're ready so let's now put a handler on this new instance of our logger so let's call our logger instance here i'm going to call the method push handler then inside of this push handler we need to tell it what handler to use like i said we're going to use the basic monolog file handler so just here we're going to bring in that so we're going to say use and we're going to say monolog and we want to bring in a handler from the library and we're going to bring in the stream handler so now we just new up an instance of this stream handler so we can say new stream handler now this takes in a couple of parameters the first thing we need to tell it is where to log the output to so let's just say current dir and we'll just create a new file in here uh, so let's just append on here in this current directory. Let's just say call this log underscore file dot log. And again, you can call that whatever you like, whatever makes the most sense to you. And then as a second parameter, we need to put in the level of logging. So let's say logger, and I'm going to say debug. Now the are now there are different levels of logging, and again, I'll come back later in the video and show you them because there's about six different ones. So for now, let's just keep it like this. So the final thing we need to do now, now we've set up the logger instance and told it how to handle the log. The next thing is to actually write something to the log. So let's come down a few lines here and say logger. And we're going to say info. And the info that we want to log is my first log. Okay. So let me just jump over to my browser and refresh this. Now we shouldn't see any output on the page. 
but we should now have a log in our application directory. And you can see here now we have a new file, log underscore file dot log. Let's just open this. And there you go, we can now see our log. And <laughs> obviously my, my text is massive for the screen recording, but basically you get a timestamp of when the log was made, the channel, which we called info, the level of the log, which we set to info also. That's just a, a coincidence there. And then the actual information that we've sent to the log. So let me just create another log now to show you the significance of each of these log levels here. So I'm just going to scroll down here. And now under here, let's create a new log. I'm going to say logger. And we're going to say this time, instead of info, we're going to log an error. Now at this point in a real world application, this would be maybe in a try catch block, for example, and then you would log the output of the exception. But for here, for this example, I'm just going to hard code a string and say, this is an error. Now let's just refresh the page again, and that should update our log file with these new logs. So in the browser, I'm just refreshing. And then back over in our log file, let's just open this again. You can see now we have that info again, because we run it again. Now we also have this other log with the log level of error and then we're logging out the contents of that. So now this helps you in your application as the application grows and your log files will grow as well. You can easily search through the file and search for a specific thing. So if something's happening in the application and you're not quite sure, then you can just search for the file for all errors and then you can see what errors are being logged. So you wouldn't necessarily be interested in the info ones, you'd only be interested in the error ones. So as you build up your application, just remember you do have these different levels and it is important that you think about these levels as you're coding and try and think ahead for your future self that when you come back and look at these logs, you want to look for very specific things. So don't log everything under info or debug or things like that. Make sure you use the different levels. So let's just, so let me just jump back over to packages here. I'm just going to scroll down and um, I've I think they have the log levels. Ah, yeah, so come under usage instructions. And then these are the different levels. So let me just zoom in to make this a read. So we have debug, info, which we've already used, notice, warning, error, which we've also used, critical, alert, and emergency. So in your logger, you can call any of these. You can log any information you like into your log file, and it will record the log level that you've defined within your code. So a lot of the time when you're logging, you might want to log basic strings, especially for things like the info and for errors where you're getting a exception error message back. But sometimes, especially during some debugging sessions, you might want to log some extra info, maybe like a post request or other forms of arrays or objects. And you can do that by passing a second parameter into your logger. Let's jump back to the code. So what I can do here as a second parameter, I can pass in a key value pair of information. Let's say this is a, an error and we've, uh, we've caught this and we want to log the current logged in user. The user's name is equal to Mark. Now, obviously I'm building this array up manually, but you'd probably get this from your logged in user object or something similar like that. And then when this is logged, you then know that this error has happened with this specific user. So let's just run that and head over to our log file again. And you can see here now we have the error message that we've logged, but also that extra array information we passed in. And you see here it's converted to a JSON string and stored it as such. So let me just give you another quick example on what I spoke about earlier on creating separate channels. So currently we have a channel called info. Let me just copy this now and let's bring this down. And let's say we want to now let's say we want to create a new logger for orders. Now in your application, you would store this under a different variable. So let's just call it logger orders. Okay. And now we've got that. We need to once again, set up a push handler. So I'm just going to copy this line here, actually. Uh, and let's just use the same log file for now. But imagine that you could create a separate log file for each of these loggers. So you want all your general purpose information logs into this file and then say, all your information about orders into a orders file. Obviously just uh, change this variable over as well. Now we have a push handler. I'm going to the same log file as our general info logger. And then let's just log out to the file. So, so let's just say logger orders. And 
I'm going to log out a warning. And what warning can we have on an order? Maybe order has no address. That could be a, a real world use case. So let's just save this now then just refresh in our browser then jump back over to our log file. And then inside of our log file, you can see now our separate channels. So we've got our info channel and we've also got our orders channel and we just logged out the order has no address here. So using separate channels will make it much easier to identify when certain things have happened in your application. So I recommend that you do split your logs out into separate channels because it also gives you the flexibility of using different push handlers. So in our case, we use the basic stream handler for both. But let's say for our orders, we always wanted to notify us as developers, maybe with an email. We'll set up that as a different handler here so we know when our customers are having problems trying to make orders. We probably don't want that just being logged out to a server file where we may never see it. So I know on the handlers, we just come back over to the documentation here. Just go back to the repository and let's see handlers, formatters and process. So as mentioned, the one that I was using here is the stream handler, which just basically logs out to a file like we've seen. But we have a whole plethora of different handlers that we could use. So like logging out to the actual systems logs rather than our files and our application. Now you can see there's many, many more. So just to have a quick look at a few. So we could send an email, for example, or a message to Slack or a message to Telegram. And if we just keep scrolling down, we can log out to sockets or, or commercial handlers like New Relic or Rollbar, for example. I'll just keep going down here. A really good one is FirePHP. If you have FirePHP installed on your browser, that can log out to the console, which, which is a really good thing, actually. So if you're not sure what FirePHP is, I'd definitely look into that. Like I said earlier, we can log out to various databases. And these are all the handlers here for those. Now, as mentioned before, I will link in the description a link to the documentation. So just dig into the documentation and just have a look around and see which handlers make the most sense to you. I'd imagine for most people, most of the login will be using the stream handler to a file. But then you can use some of these more exotic handlers for the more critical level errors. Because you probably don't want to spam your inbox when the application logs any kind of information. So if you did like this video, don't forget to give it the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And also check out the other videos on my channel. I have a lot of Laravel related content. And there's also a playlist together for various other PHP packages that you might be interested in bringing into your projects.